As Disney abandons box office reporting for the Marvels less than a month after release and Wish just two weeks after release, we take a look at the creative executive in charge of Walt Disney Animation since animation legend John Lasseter was walked out the door in 2018. Jennifer Lee has taken the reins. Let's talk about that on That Park Place. This is Jonas J. Campbell from That Park Place, where we cover entertainment, streaming, theme parks, and video games about twice a day. Maybe hit the like button or subscribe if you're interested in that kind of thing. Of course, we just announced that our big live stream, That Park Place Live, will be moving to Thursdays at noon. If you'd like to be notified of when that is in your local time, please hit the notification bell and set it to all notifications. But let's get back to what we were talking about. Bob Iger has been making all kinds of contradictory statements about where the company is headed. So all we can really go on is what Disney has been doing and what people other than Bob Iger have been saying. Since the next Disney animated feature that we know about is Frozen 3, which Disney has also said is the lead up to Frozen 4, let's focus today on the creative output of Jennifer Lee, the director and screenwriter of Frozen 1 and 2, the screenwriter of A Wrinkle in Time, the screenwriter of Disney's Wish, and the chief creative officer of Walt Disney Feature Animation. Let's get into it. As Disney struggles right now to uh, define what was so good about the last 100 years, uh, they're now, of course, pulling back to uh, 2019 to their last big indisputable hit. Uh, Jennifer Lee, who is the current head of Walt Disney Animation, the creative head of Walt Disney Animation, uh, teases that Frozen 3 is coming and also is saying that they're going to go ahead and make Frozen 4. Anybody excited? Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, apparently they have such a grand and epic story to tell, according to Jennifer Lee, that it might just encompass two movies to tell it. It's so amazing. Uh, look, I <laughs> listen um, here. Here, here's, I think, Bob Iger's kind of driver here. When I heard originally that they were going to do a Frozen 3, a Zootopia 2, uh, you know, going back to the well of some of these franchises like they are, that told me, okay, Bob Iger doesn't necessarily believe in the creative enough in order to bankroll $200 million original pieces. Apparently, he has seen from the inside what these guys are capable of, and it's like, okay, let's just go with what works, at least with these guys. And I think this is why he's going back to this well here. The, the problem, though, is that these creators creatives are so you know it's just been riddled with so many activists who are going to take these franchises and do what they want with them you run the real risk of destroying uh these golden gooses that are you know franchises like toy stories utopia and frozen yeah uh to to bring this back to uh jennifer lee uh, a little bit ha has anyone looked at the pattern of films that have been released since john lassiter left in 2018 there's garbage uh, uh, well, that yeah, that's one way to put it. Um, <laughs> okay, so Please. John Lasseter was walked out the door in 2018 for yes. reasons that are controversial. Controversial because no charges were filed. Nobody sued anybody. They just kind of walked him out the door. In fact, uh, Alan Ng and Chris Gort, which, by the way, they're going to they're gonna release more on their story. To they're, they're trying to get people from the Disney company that have contacted them to maybe give them some more information and allow them to release some things. They did say on more than one live stream that Jennifer Lee's name came up in several of these stories. Hmm. So uh, Ralph Breaks the Internet. Uh, that was 2018, November of 2018. So it's right after um, John Lasseter left the company. And um, I, I would say he probably still had a lot to do with it. But what was the ending of that film? What was the big villain of Ralph Breaks the Internet? Uh, well, I I actually didn't see it. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> well, I, I, I knew uh, it was, it, Ra the quality was... The entire was... plot of, of Ralph Breaks the Internet is he's trying to, the the uh, steering wheel on Vanellope von Schweetz, who is a little girl, it's not a romantic relationship, it's kind of a, a, a buddy cop, a, a buddy relationship. Uh, her steering wheel on her arcade me machine is going to break and it's going to be too expensive to fix, so he's trying to get a another... Um, steering wheel and he ends up in the process of it going to the internet accidentally unleashing a virus that feeds on insecurity so his literal insecurity and i'm saying oh they God. say this in the film i am not speaking symbolically other than that the villain is a giant mob zombie mob of ralph's that become an insecure monster that cannot take the idea that uh this little girl is going to move on without him this is not exactly the kind of story that you want a five-year-old so, latching onto, that all of your friends are going to leave every, you when you need so, to be okay So wait, let, let, let me get this straight. We've gone from insecurity to now a new character that is anxiety? Yes. In, uh, yes. In yes. the new uh, Inside Out? Yes. It, well, you've, you've, hit on, you've hit on the theme.
You've hit right. on the theme. And, and we've talked about this, and Alan was on the pro show when we talked about it. The fact that uh, the Walt Disney Company, if you have anxiety as and people have said, well, she could have taken the place of sadness. Well, if the re if the resolution of Inside Out is that sadness can tinge moments of joy, do we need to have a character that is anxiety needs to tinge all moments of 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 joy or anxiety and depression need to be there to flavor all moments of joy in your past. I don't think that this is, I'm going to say again, maybe there are people at Pixar right now that could thread that needle. I don't think they can thread that. No, needle. no way. If you want to see anxiety in the movies, go see Mel Brooks <laughs> or uncut with, gems. With, uncut with, gems with, is, with is that anxiety. Great, that incarnate. great scene in the bar where he does his Sinatra impression, singing the title track, high anxiety. And well, Jonas, I mean, you were, you were, you have been talking about this for a little while now, about how the, like the themes of these films in the post Lasseter era. And they, they, you know, they lay them on pretty thick in some cases. Strange World, obviously, an analogy for climate change, right? Uh, even Wish, to a certain extent, is about the, you know, usurping the patriarchy, white patriarchy, I should I should say. Uh, you had some commentary on Frozen 2, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, yeah, Frozen 2, which, of course, uh, Frozen 2, again, is about insecurity and people moving on without you, which we have two films in a row between Ralph Breaks the Internet and that that is about insecurity and letting go of the people that you love also she thinks elsa dies in that and there's there's a great song do the next right thing i'm not going to say the song the music was bad in frozen 2 it's probably why it made so much money because right. the music was still good they also left out the activism the well sorry the more tangible woke aspects were intentionally cut from that film rumors say i'm going to put an asterisk on that one but but there i mean there's still some heavy duty activism in there in in, in including a uh delete aside right, uh, right. Yeah, she basically, if people yeah. had not left the city then the fact that they blow up a uh, a dam and the yeah. water comes down and is going to destroy uh everything they've built because they have to atone for the sins of white colonialism Right. Um, mm -hmm. Which, um, you know, OK, you know, th th these are the kind of things that are peace treaty talks as opposed to um, you just go ahead and haul off and do that kind of thing, like where you're going to end up uh, getting rid of an entire uh, city without telling anyone that I they need to evacuate the city. I don't want to bring anybody down, but it's not a far stretch from that to what's going on in our world. In the Middle East. Yes. Yes. And, so these, and these kids endorsing it. Right. So and because I don't want to go too too far down that path, I, I agree with you, by the way. Uh, let's talk about Encanto real quick. Let's touch on that. Yes. Because what is the villain of Encanto? They so, all my, all of my kids think the the grandmother is the villain of Encanto and they hate the grandmother because this is how little kids interpret these things. Encanto, the villain is familial expectation, uh, generational trauma, generational trauma. Well, yeah. uh -huh. same thing. Yeah. It's, culture. It, it, it's disgusting because this is conditioning young people, especially children, which is where these films are targeted into just is into just diving into their fears and listening to, you know, all of this messaging in a way that they, they internalize it. You're creating mental illness potentially in, in children because of these themes and the people who aren't clearly paying attention or, or even maybe now realizing it based on your wonderful coverage here, Jonas, um, you know, it, this is the this is the kind of indoctrination that that's happening at this level and by this company because of their crappy corporate culture. Think about the lessons that were taught in films like Pinocchio, right? And versus the lessons today, and, right, where it's all and about kind of oh, go ahead. kids. I'll go through a period of, oh, everybody grown up is an idiot and don't trust right. anybody under right. 30 and all the rest of that stuff. But they grow out of it. Yeah, They are they telling don't, you, don't grow out of it. It's great. Stay no, in it. Embrace they don't grow out of it. They go work for the Disney company. Oh, well. <laughs> but if we take this to all the other things going on in our society where people are being told to go with their, their emotions, neuro neuroses yes. and, yeah. and, and make, make a virtue of them, uh, we see where this is going. It, as yeah. you said, it's people who go to work for the Disney company who never did grow out of it. They're going to tell everybody, well, it's not me that's wrong. It's you for having thought I should. Correct. Right. So and, and, and culture and Vash, you guys mentioned Strange World, which is, of course, it's a that one is the most activist uh, they had so far, which sure. is all about climate change and all about um, getting rid of fossil fuels, 
also has a lot about how the white patriarchy is wrong yes. even though even though they're heroes they're flawed and they abandon us and uh i'm just going to point out uh traeger or wait wait no what's his name is it um, Traeger? What, uh yeah it's jaeger that's right uh oh the uh the hero of that the one that's played oh. by uh, dennis quaid in the end he ends up embracing uh diversity disability all of these things he's got this big shot where he he hugs everybody and then before the end of the Ooh. movie which by the way he's been gone for a while he comes back he finds out his wife is remarried so who does he embrace by the end of it the guy who has uh, been shacking up with his wife for a oh, very long God. time like come on come well, on disney what are you there, doing here there's another one i'm glad i missed <laughs> One, uh, one of the smartest things Chapek and Kareem Daniels ever did was cut the marketing budget for yeah. that because that was good. That was good money after bad. Of course, and they they also you know they have the the parents pushing the son to uh, to get in a relationship with uh, Diego, the other the uh, other guy in the film who dresses a little bit more girly here. Um, and and the, of course, the last uh, shot of them in the film is the two of them kind of staring off into the sunset at the new world that they've created which by the way has no fuel source now um yeah which is going to die soon yes do, do, do you notice the continuing thread here it, <laughs> it, 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 no i don't mean the obvious w one i wokeness? mean it is no do we think that in the quote-unquote writers rooms of all of these good movies in the past that some idiot might have said hey what if they or what if we had them do the difference is there's no adult in the room to say no next right yeah, no, you 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 just referenced uh, the dumb stuff that Kathleen Kennedy said on every production she was ever involved in, according to Steven Spielberg and George Lucas. She was the idiot in the room saying, "What if he doesn't get the girl? What if he gets the dog?" <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa! We're not going there yet. But uh, Zootopia Sorry. two, who knows? Uh, well, the, and... the question I have, of course, is how long do you think? Because there's a there's a town hall meeting today. Uh, Pro asks a great question. Can Jennifer Lee last, or is she Patty Jenkins 2.0? Oh, oh I, I, if if you keep having, I think you need to tell the audience level. who those people are because a lot of people probably don't know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah that's a good point. Jennifer Lee is the is is the chief creative officer of Walt Disney Animation. She's not in charge of the Pixar stuff. Pete Doctor is in charge of the Pixar stuff, which is why it's equally terrible, right? And right. Patty Jenkins was the director of Wonder Woman and Wonder Woman 1984. She was signed on to direct Rogue Squadron, and she might have even had some hand in writing writing or shepherding the writing of Rogue Squadron. Uh, Kathleen Kennedy insisted that movie was going to happen. They actually showed kind of some kind of sizzle thing where it's her in some kind of fighter jet kind of thing. Uh, maybe they were trying to evoke um, <coughs> Top Gun a little bit. Or there, the invisible but, airplane of uh, Wonder Woman. That would, be, that would be great. I would love if the invisible airplane was actually done. That's uh, funny. But, of course, that is just like everything that Lucasfilm announces theatrically. It's vaporware. It's going to disappear into the wind. So does anybody think that uh, Jennifer Lee has a long future here? Is she here to stay or uh, is she going to be the sacrificial lamb in order to show that they're it, making changes at the Walt Disney Company? It, I think it depends on how effective we are. Mm. I'm sorry. I yeah. mean, we 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 I know I know it's hard to believe that a small contingent of dissatisfied, disgruntled former fans you know, have have been able to levy a whole lot of damage at a company who's incredibly disconnected from their core purpose now. Uh, but but we are. They listen to us. They follow people. I mean, look, Jonas has a famous follower. Uh, <laughs> yes. You know, um, but, and, but, and, but yeah. let's consider what's going on in the in the corporate universe of this company. And last time Peltz came on, they threw him a bone and he went away. It yeah. is not without thought that Iger might be thinking, well, if we sacrifice a couple of people, they, they don't matter anyway. They're not me. He'll go away again. I don't think he will. But no. could somebody like this be the uh, the sacrificial goat that they it's... throw in the way of the of the ongoing uh, barbarian trend of trying to take them over? Sure, they could. Sure, they could. I think it's it's possible because now that she's been given full creative control to do essentially whatever she wants to do, we're now seeing the fruits of that, and they're not good, right? And there's nobody that you can necessarily blame for their underperformance. It, it, I, I really got to, you know, I, I mean, we bring it up almost every show, but John Lester was such an influencing force 
for that animation studio. I mean, there were there were Wish is so half baked. There's no way that right. would have been released. And, and not, right. just, not just it, the animation studio. Do you think former Jungle Cruise skipper John Lasseter would ever have let that ride fall to pieces at Disney World? No, absolutely no. not. Period. They had they had video of him touring the parks and and talking about all the things he loved about the parks. And it wasn't like they sat him in front of a screen and he said, no. "Oh, on set we have so much fun. This is the best crew." It's almost like I'm not even working. No, he's just out there and they're getting him. They're just doing candid shots of him and getting him just walking around the park, enjoying what is going on because he loved what he did. He loved the parks. This conversation was originally part of That Park Place Live, which we used to do every Tuesday, but now we're doing it every Thursday at 12 p.m. Eastern time, otherwise known as noon. Feel free to hit the notification bell if you're not sure when that is. And of course, like this video if you like this video. Share it out on social media if you know someone who might be interested in this sort of thing, and we would be honored if you would subscribe to That Park Place for all the news that should be fun. Thanks for watching That Park Place News. For more information, consider checking out www.thatparkplace.com. And don't forget to subscribe, share, like, and send this out on your favorite social media accounts.